right, what's going on? Chris here from Chris and G Travels. We have Robert today and he's gonna be installing a 200 watt solar kit on the RV. So you wanna go ahead and catch everybody up on what we're doing? Okay, what we're doing is we're installing two flexible, new style solar panels on the roof. We're gonna be in, putting in a three-way inverter. It's an inverter, converter, and solar charger in one. The controller's built into it. So far, walked through the coach, we've checked all the areas, We've found where our panels are going, we found our power source, we found the inverter position that we're gonna put it in, we found the battery bank, we know what we're going to do and we're gonna start going through it. I'm opening the access panel to access the lugs for the solar portion of it and the AC disconnect and reconnect it for the solid state controller that's inside. Get the prices down as uh, much as possible. Well, we're on the roof now and we're looking for a position to put the two panels and a route to get down to the lower compartments where we're going to put all the equipment. We've picked out this side of the coach roof and we're going to prep this. We're going to measure it. We're going to mark it so that we know that our panels are going to fit in the proper place and we're going to get to it. Basically, we're going to measure out the 19 and a half inches long by six foot nine inch wide. Trying to stay away from the edge of the roof. We're gonna leave a little gap between the two panels so that we can seal them up real good to keep water from getting underneath them. Considering this is a fiberglass roof, we're going to just use a simple cleaner on it and get it as clean as we can get it, as dry as we can get it. Panels we're going to be putting down are self-adhesive. They're peel and stick. They have like a butyl background to them that will stick virtually to anything as long as it's clean. Flexible, they can be bent, they can be rolled up. Yeah touch up, try and get anything that would contaminate the seal. And now we're going to get the panels up here and lay them out. While the roof is drying, uh, we'll go over that one more time before we set these. We're going to verify voltage on both of these panels. Just to make sure you're not installing something that needs repair. They do get shipped, they do get hurt. There's 21 volts there, 21 there. We've got good panels. We're gonna set these panels up in a series. And the reason we can do that is we're using an MPPT controller system for it. If you didn't, you'd have to run them in parallels. You can run both panels through each other um, in a series. We're going to be taking a positive and connecting it to a negative, leaving us with a positive and negative that are going to go down to the controller. This is taking the, the voltage of this panel and the voltage of this panel combined instead of running this one and this one independent of each other. That's going to be our wiring layout. Now it's time to put the panels down. You want to go lengthwise, you pulling off the, the covering and set an edge first. So if you've got to make an adjustment, you're able to make the adjustment. This would be the outside edge that's being exposed. This is the, the membrane underneath here that's going to stick this right to the roof. Over we go. As flat and as tight to the roof as you can get them. And all the sunshine we got going today is going to help. It'll soften up the what I refer to as the butyl background, and it's the adhesive membrane on the back. It should be able to 
let you walk all the air out from underneath the membrane. You don't want to let water get underneath them. You can feel where you've got little pockets of air. It's not a point of getting it as flat as you can get it. It's getting it completely stuck to the roof. There's one. Now we let the sun do its work and get them all laid down. We're gonna, we've got these put down on the roof and because of the butyl, we're gonna leave them sit while we're rerouting all the wiring off of the roof down to the compartment where we're gonna put the inverter. In this coach, the electronics are on the driver's side. The battery bank is on the passenger side. I've got to find a route to run the battery cables over for the inverter. This one's pretty wide open. It's just trying to make sure everything stays away from other stuff because if you run it in amongst your electronics, it can cause interference. This one luckily has got a lot of ports going into this box and the battery box has three different ones coming out of it. Solar input line has got to be routed from mid chassis all the way back to this rear bay. You have a percentage of loss in your battery cables depending on the wire size. You know, if you're, run, if you're running a two aught wire, you don't have as much loss as if you're running a four aught wire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run two four aughts for positive and two negative four aughts and we're gonna use the frame of the truck for the ground, and that should limit our loss. Now we're at the point where we're going to route the wiring for the two solar panels on the roof. We're gonna disassemble the top vent of the refrigerator bay, and we're gonna start running it down. You got a clear shot. a typical routing um, in fifth wheels um, I prefer to follow the sewer vent because it takes you right down into the basement but sometimes you've got to go into a bathroom or a kitchen area remove paneling from the wall to get it routed through the floor because there's no hole at the bottom for expansion later on if you want to put more panels up here I'm going to leave a loop of this down inside the refrigerator bay and then we'll put a nylon tie strap to keep it from falling down the hole so that you can pull more of this up here and move it around to do your wiring. We are routing the solar panel cables through the refrigerator compartment down past the furnace into the lower belly of the coach and then we'll route them all the way back to the compartment where the uh, inverter, converter, and solar controller are going to be placed. And we stow it away. We're finding the shortest route, the cleanest and shortest route, basically, to run the solar panel lines. And coaches are really nice because they make all sorts of places for wire ties. No, I'll be going down the center of the frame following the wire harness oh, and yeah. brake lines because it makes it easiest to wrap them. routing the battery cables from the battery bay over to the inverter bay and we're routing a pair of grounds to a frame lug from the battery bank. In the end we'll have the negative to the frame on the battery side. We'll pick up the negative on another frame lug over at the, bat, over at the inverter bay. Just making sure we have a nice clean route so we have nothing that can rub the 
coating and end up with a short. Give us an option to where we want to place it. Basically what we're doing is in the battery bay using the existing ports that the factory put in we're routing the positive and negative cables over to the inverter on the opposite side of the coach. I'm looking at the automatic shore power relay that once it's unplugged it closes the system and you go back solely on battery, it disconnects from the, the breaker box. And this is where we're going to tie the inverter in to pick up power to your uh, breaker box. We're routing the battery cables to the inverter and the solar power cable into the, the inverter bay and then we're going to wire we're going to wire tie all this up and then we're going to get in the box and start hooking stuff up. We're going to start at the DC end of the inverter converter solar controller. We're going to we're going to land the the negative and the positive on this unit and then we're going to slide it back into place. You turn it around and we'll start on the AC side double cables on this so that we don't have to run 2 watt wire which is hard really hard to route this is 4 watt cable with fine strand so it's easy to work with we're also going to add a chassis ground so that this is grounded to the chassis of the truck right now we're lugging the solar panels into the inverter and that's what they should look like. I made up a cable to be the jumper from the input 30 amp into the inverter and then we're going to come out of the inverter to the breaker box in the coach. We are doing the final DC lugging on the battery bank and then we will go on the roof, hook the panels in live and put the refrigerator cover back down and then we'll come back down and do a test on the on the inverter. All else fails. Smile. We just set the battery type for the unit. The charging portion of this needs to know what type of battery and it sets it up basically by amperage and the unit is live. Green light, we are good. Now we're going to go up on the roof, plug the panels in, plug the monitor in, read the monitor, see what everything's doing. We're at the point where we've hooked up everything. The unit is on and running. The solar panels on the roof are all plugged in and producing power to the inverter charging the battery system and producing AC power for the house. I got the monitor in my hand so I can check what everything is doing. And right now the input AC uh, from the shore says that it is zero. That's because we're unplugged from the shore. Battery DC is at 12.5. The output load is 10%. Our AC is at uh, 121 volts, 60 hertz on the inverter. The last things we got to do is clean up all the places that we brought cables in, seal them up, mount the unit to the floor, route the cable, mount the monitor, close everything back up and it's ready to go. We've also disconnected the AC power for the in-house battery charger so it's no longer in the system. The system takes care of all of it. Inverter, charger, solar controller. We've tested everything, everything works. Now comes the cleanup, get everything bolted down. The unit right now is just sitting here. We're gonna mount it permanently to the floor. We're gonna seal up all of the excess accesses for the cabling that comes in here. We're gonna cap off the, the 12 volt lugs on this. We're gonna go up on the roof. We're gonna put a 
bead of sealant around both panels and seal them off so wind can't get under them, water can't get under them. And we're gonna seal up the um, air con or the uh, refrigerator cap, the the top vent because it's just sitting up there until we figured out how much wire we needed on top, and then we're gonna call it a day. Everybody, thanks for watching. So that completes the install of the EZRV uh, pure and sine wave inverter along with the flexible solar panels. Right now the system's running. My shore power is charging the batteries. This is taking over as the controller. Uh, we're going to be field testing this. Be sure to check out our upcoming videos and we'll let you know what we think of the kit. Hey everybody, thanks for watching and be sure to check out our social media and our website chrisandgtravels.com. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and also share this video with your friends. We'd also like to thank Progressive Industries for making daily videos in Alaska possible. Nailed it!